Assalamu alaikum, you're watching the Heather Ifrit Show and I'm your host Heather Ifrit. Today I'm here with Yasser Jaswal, who's a film director, a singer, and now an entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining me, sir. Thank you so much um, for having me. I'd like me. to begin with your um, experience. How was it like for, uh, directing your own film, the debut film that you created, Jalebi? Uh, it was uh, very much a dream come true, I guess, uh, because uh, uh, around that time, uh, not a lot of films were being made. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we were the third film uh, in the new wave of cinema that came out. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, really challenging, it was uh, really difficult, it was, it was a lot of hard work by a lot of passionate people. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I, at the same time it was really inspiring and it was uh, very encouraging the way everyone was coming down and helping us in whatever we had to do. So I think it was an amazing, it was uh, one of the best experiences of my life. So now you've also shifted your focus to a more entrepreneurial side. So do you think, uh, what really inspired the idea of Jesse's? Well, uh, Jesse's is a burger joint and I've uh, always uh, loved burgers. I'm a big foodie and uh, all of my brothers and my family, even my parents, we love to uh, host dinners and mm -hmm. feed people. So, you know, it's, it's, I, it's primarily, I think it's, it's in the genes, so mm -hmm. to say. And uh, Islamabad didn't have a lot of uh, hangout places where you can find good burgers and you know it, it always keeps uh, a very, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's always kept a very low profile when it comes to restaurants mm -hmm. and uh, hangout or cafes, um, you know, so, so I wanted to open up a place which is not only good burgers, affordable uh, good food, but also at the same time, I wanted uh, you know a place where people can just hang out, chill, and it can be loud and can be expressive. Uh, from the walls, uh, you've seen the murals that are painted on the walls. They're, they're young, talented uh, NCA grads. We gave them the walls to paint whatever they wanted to mm -hmm. do. We have musical events uh, after every two, three weekends. Uh, we try to bring someone in who can play free for the audience. Uh, we don't charge any tickets. We don't. We don't expect them to buy any food. We just want to promote mm -hmm. arts and culture in any way possible that we can. So it needed to be loud. It needed to be inspiring, and it needed to have great food. So I think uh, that's what inspired yeah, you. Yeah, that's them. that's uh, that's basically where it drives from. So do you plan to expand it beyond Islamabad, or is it just Islamabad based? Well, this is it's only been a month now, and uh, I, I don't I don't I don't think it, there's uh, any plan as of right now. But of course, if it does well, we have to see how. It goes mm -hmm. six months down the line, a year down the line. So then, then, then we'll decide if we want to take it anywhere else. Okay. I would like to shift my focus on nepotism because uh, obviously you have been affiliated with the film industry for a long period. So, do you think that nepotism exists in Pakistan's film industry, or what's your take on that? Where, where, where did you get the idea that nepotism exists? Because I personally feel because um, as an aspiring actor and as a person who is really into performing arts I for one have seen that in the films in the most in Pakistani films we always get to see Javed Sheikh as a lead role or we get to see Hamza Ali Abbasi or we get to see Humayun Sayyid especially so I think that it is a bit bound to a few actors only and it limits I've never really heard of any auditions taking place you know recruiting people different people from across the nation to take part in certain films so why is that why do you think nepotism exists I think uh, it's not about nepotism, I think it's morely about uh, uh, because we're such a fragile uh, industry right now. So people who are investing in these films and in these projects, and it's not mm -hmm. easy to make a film because you're not, it's not about the budget of the film. You know, five, ten crore rupees for probably a TV channel like ARY or Geo is nothing. They probably make a drama out of that money. But uh, for, for them, that's not a lot of investment. But it's a huge risk. It's a people will forget the five thousand dramas that they see every year, but they won't forget the one film that they saw. That mm -hmm. they will remember it for mm. years and years, or if it was good or if it was bad. Mm -hmm. They'll remember even if they haven't seen it. They'll remember the reviews of the of the film because we're not making that many films right now. We're not making. Uh, we're not even breaking the clutter right now. Do you get what I'm saying? So yes. everyone's coming in, and people want a sure shot or a safe bet. Uh, when they invest in such ventures, mm -hmm. so that's why. But but a lot of people are doing uh, auditions, and a lot of uh, filmmakers that I know are looking for new faces and new talent. Uh, because of course, at the same time, there there are also people who think that 
they need fresh faces and they need fresh talent to come in because mm-hmm. these actors and performers have been tainted by the TV screen and they can't perform for the big screen. Mm-hmm. So they're both, I think, school of thoughts that are right, currently working. But uh, you know, it's it's. I I don't think there's uh, there's any favoritism or there's any uh, you know uh, aura of grandeur or you know misconception that you know these guys are the only actors that we have or these guys are the only or or they kind of dictate their terms. Uh, there's no. I've I've never seen anything like that. Yes, there are producers who want to safeguard their investment. Mm-hmm. and it's just about playing it safe at this point once the industry grows and other people come in and other players come in and we see 300 films a year then you'll see a lot of new talent coming in so is it difficult for you to multitask when you're a singer now you've also established your own business is it difficult multitasking when you are you know all over the place i don't i don't think it's very difficult because uh, right now i'm not singing okay. or or directing uh right now i'm just running this restaurant mm-hmm. and i'm putting all my efforts into this uh in 3 months i'll take a break from this i'll go back to my filmmaking career and i'll work on my second project which is almost done and i see it's 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 down on paper but i had to take a break and invest my time and my efforts into this before i went on to anything else and singing i've primarily uh chosen filmmaking or you know over being, it yeah over it so Now now I I only record songs when I have the time I don't make my videos anymore I I don't even make videos for other people anymore so music has kind of taken a back seat overall I get uh, it. Okay. but even if I do record songs I don't release them I don't I don't plan to release them mm-hmm. I record them my family listens to them my brothers listen to them and that's but it But there are a lot of other fans too who want to listen to it Yeah but I don't I, if I if I've always thought that if you want to do something do it properly Okay. So otherwise, there's no use really. I I release two tracks as a solo artist, but I really didn't follow up with anything. Mm-hmm. No music videos, no interviews, no podcasts or anything. You know, no radio interviews either because they were just audio releases. Mm-hmm. So I I don't I don't I don't think I was doing it justice. So I recorded a lot more songs, but I never released them. So I will when I get time. so being a director what is the one thing the new lot of directors the people who are coming in the new directors up and coming directors what's the one piece of advice you would like to give to them or what's the one thing that they need to focus on when it comes to filmmaking well honestly i think uh, a lot of the new lot that's coming in are way more talented than i am <laughs> and uh, they're way more passionate than i am i kind of stumbled upon to directing uh, because no one nobody uh would make our music videos or nobody could afford or we couldn't afford good directors so so mm-hmm. we had to step in um but if there's any advice that i could give anyone who's uh, making a film is uh, is it would be to keep an open mind and uh, to to soak in everything that everyone says and of course you have to follow your own vision but you'll be surprised how valuable uh something that a spot boy or or just just random public could tell you uh about anything at all you know so just just keep an open mind and open heart so what's the one thing you would like to change about pakistan's film industry um i don't know i don't think i think there there isn't much there to change i'd 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 surely add a lot of things to it like I'd add more technicians to it. I'd add more actors mm-hmm. to it. More producers, more production houses, more believers in film, more audiences in the cinemas, mm-hmm. more cinemas to start off with. But uh, I think we don't really have a film industry right now. We have a film market, and it's going to grow and become an industry. I don't think there's anything to change. Just there's so much to add to it, mm-hmm. and there's so much space for new people to come in and add different genres into it, and uh, you know this. I'd add a million things, but I wouldn't change anything because there's not much to change, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, yeah, so Yasser, do you at any point in time when you were directing the film Jalebi, did you ever feel insecure that you had certain expectations to meet when it comes to uh, directing a film? Because there are a lot of other established directors. So did you ever feel that insecurity taking place? Not really. I think everyone has a unique voice and everyone has uh, a unique style of presenting whatever. I, I believe in one thing, whether it's filmmaking or if it's uh, serving burgers or if it's writing songs or whatever it is 
everything's been said and done before you know mm-hmm. you can you can create a new kind of <laughs> i i that's what i i a lot of people might disagree with me but i think everything's been said and done period it's how you perceive what's happening in front of you and rewrite or represent uh, it to the public is the beauty and the uniqueness within one's mind so nobody's really doing anything new you're just soaking in and you're just getting inspired or just just taking inspiration from uh people around you and instances and things that are happening and events that are happening around you and you recreate it and then present it in a way that you perceived it mm-hmm. so um i think everyone so because of that feeling that i had i i, I don't think I, i ever had any problems with yeah of course i i always thought you know i don't have proper education about film making but i knew that i had the passion and i knew that <laughs> that i could and this was before the whole wave of cinema came mm-hmm. uh, i used to work at a at an agency and before that i used to work for a telecom service provider in the marketing department and i used to tell my bosses that you know i'm going to leave this job and i'm going to go and make a film and they would laugh at me because the kind of films that were coming out at that time were just punjabi bullshit films so uh they were they were like why would you even think about that you know why is that even an option and no one was talking about revival of cinema uh, but but it was something that i i knew that i wanted to do and i did it this is something everything that i've done in my 34 years of life has uh, happened because i really wanted to do it no one's forced me to do something no one can force me to do something if i don't want to do it i won't do it if i if i i will only do something if i'm really passionate about it if i'm not passionate about it i won't even touch it so i had that passion in me and i knew that you know a guy from islamabad who had no financial backing or media backing or any purchase or uh, powers i went out and you know me and all my friends who were on the project with me we made a film and it was just, it wasn't just me who was on that project who had those kind of dreams or had that kind of passion everyone the whole 160 people 162 people that were on the set at one time or the other everyone was do, doing it out of passion no one was doing it for money no one was doing it for the fame or the glory because there wasn't really an established film industry so we were only doing it for the passion and the love of film so towards the end what is the one project that you're working on or many other projects that you're working on that you would like to share with us well right now like i said i'm only working on my restaurant and uh, me and my partner are very much invested into it physically and uh, with all our mind and all our time we're just focused on this um, it will take 2 3 months for me to i think make sure that everything's uh, up and running smoothly mm-hmm. and then uh, inshallah with the, by the mid of this year i'm going to move on to my film project and uh, i think by next year so may, maybe mid or end of next year uh, i'm in no hurry to make my next film it's uh, i've written it it's an action flick uh, we've uh, talked to different production houses that are on board uh, some of it is going to be shot in pakistan Uh, we're trying that all of it is shot in pakistan but we need some this because since it's an action film uh we need some technical assistance that we don't usually get in pakistan mm-hmm. uh with stunts and action sequences so we might take it abroad for a while but uh, yeah we haven't done any casting uh we've, we've worked on the music of the film it has seven amazing songs and we haven't casted for it we haven't finalized the script yet mm-hmm. but yeah A lot of things are done. A lot of things aren't done. So right now, there's not much much I can say about it. But uh, in three four months, I'll have a better picture of where we stand. I guess. Thank you so much, Yasser. It's a pleasure Watch. to talk Thank to you. Thank you so much. Um, that was Yasser Jaspal. For more information and videos, stay tuned on my official YouTube channel and Facebook page. Until then, take care. Allah.